Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Jesse Morse, a sports medicine physician, and I have a practice in Miami called the Osteopathic Center, where we specialize in identifying the root cause of the injuries, whether it is specific for sports medicine or more of a functional medicine approach like heavy metals or Lyme disease or mold poisoning or anything like that. My goal is to figure out the underlying cause and address it as much as possible. For sports medicine injuries, I have a tendency to do a lot of regenerative medicine injections. That usually entails either blood taken out of the arm, spinning it down and putting the platelet-rich plasma back into the tissue. Sometimes we use stem cells from your hip in the form of bone marrow or from your fat in the form of adipose. Or sometimes you can even get uh, different types of allografts which are donated tissue or donated amniotic tissue or something called exosomes, depending on where you practice throughout the world. Now, the beauty of regenerative medicine and non-surgical orthopedics is you can make a lot of progress to specific tissues without having to go undergo surgery and without having to just live with and, and deal with suffering. Now, in general, uh, Regenerative medicine is not traditionally part of a plan for an orthopedic office or for a family medicine or traditional medicine office because it is not covered by insurance. So it is almost always out of pocket and that usually is quote unquote frowned upon by traditional practice because insurance doesn't cover it. So they're not usually going to offer it just because something isn't covered by insurance doesn't mean it doesn't work. Now, my, my goal for this podcast series is to discuss all different types of uh, medicine, whether it's family medicine, whether it's functional medicine, whether it's sports medicine. Uh, it, we, it will mix in some anti-aging and longevity medicine. And right now I'm kind of in the thick of, of sports medicine and different uh, orthopedic injuries. We've discussed shoulders and Achilles and, and knees and hips and uh, all different uh, body parts. Today, I'm going to focus on the ankle, which is the most common orthopedic injury. Uh, at some point in time, each of us has rolled our ankle and suffered an ankle sprain, uh, whether you're a woman wearing high heels and accidentally rolling out, or you're playing basketball and you land on someone's foot and your ankle rolls out, or you just simply step off a curb and it didn't expect it. Now, these are very, very common and the most common cause of missed athletic performance. We see it all the time if you watch the NBA. We see it quite often if you watch the NFL. And you can see it in pretty much most sports, whether it's soccer, whether it's volleyball or dancing. These are very common because of the structure of the ankle. Now, today I'm going to break it up into three different sections. There are predominantly three different types of ankle sprains. You have your lateral ankle sprain. You have what we call your medial or inner ankle sprain. And then we have something called a high ankle sprain. Now I'm going to walk through this with my model here because it's a lot easier to do this visually because it, 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 it rather than just trying to figure out what part I'm talking about. Now, Usually these are accompanied by swelling, bruising, and a decreased range of motion, usually temporarily. That can uh, last for up to two weeks uh, and resolves pretty quickly depending on the severity. Now up to 30% of people will continue to suffer with this pain uh, acutely. Um, Anatomy-wise, as I mentioned earlier, you have the three different types of ankle injuries. The lateral ankle has three different ligaments. We'll talk about in a minute. The medial or inner part has basically one thick ligament that's broken down into a couple sub ligaments. And then your high ankle sprain, which is actually above your ankle uh, and more in the lower shin, uh, has one big thick ligament and a couple others that complement it. Uh, and we'll, we'll kind of make up uh, and discuss each of these today. Now, the ATFL, uh, which is the most common injured ligament in the entire body, uh, and it's on the lateral aspect of the ankle. If someone says, hey, I rolled my ankle outside and I have pain, it's almost always to the ATFL. About 70% of the time for a lateral ankle sprain, this is the ligament that you're going to injure, and that's it. Now, this ligament is responsible for plantar flexion and what we call inversion meaning it's on the outside of your ankle, so it's responsible for pushing your, your, your foot, your toes, inward. 
Now there's one next to it or basically just below it called the CFL, which is kind of on the bottom here, just above the base of the heel. And that is usually more injured in grade twos or the moderate sprains. That is also responsible for inversion, but this one is actually responsible for dorsiflexion. Now, the last one in this type of injury or this type of location is called the PTFL, which is kind of the opposite of the ATFL. And this is in the back. Uh, the P stands for posterior. It is very rarely injured. Uh, usually these are, are grade threes or these are pretty bad injuries or there's another tendon injury involved. Um, in general, when we're taught orthopedics, there's a simple set of rules for basically anyone over the age of five called the Ottawa ankle rules. And, and these are a set of quote unquote rules to determine if someone needs x-rays and, and determine what likelihood they're going to have a, a fracture in that ankle. Now, the first one is, can the person bear weight and walk up to four steps after the injury? If they cannot do that, red flag. But if they're able to hobble for a couple steps uh, after the injury, it may not be comfortable, but they can do it. It's usually a very good sign. Now, if the medial or inside bone, there's a little bone there, or the outside bone, each of those are called the malleolus. If each of those are really, really tender, that's a bad sign. It doesn't have to be both. It can be either. And you can have a medial ankle sprain, quite rare, but or a lateral ankle sprain. But if you have a significant tenderness at that spot, you may have a fracture. Now, if you have a, a tenderness at the base of the fifth, which is on the outside, kind of towards the back of the foot, it, there's a little protrusion basically where the bone ends. Uh, that can commonly be fractured. That's called a Jones fracture or subtype of it. And if that is tender, that is a sign you need to get imaging and you need to get more, more, more than just an x-ray. Now, there's a bone in the foot called the navicular. And if you have tenderness, it's usually up here in the midfoot. And it's kind of just below the ankle joint, but not really towards the toes. It's kind of more up high. If you have significant tenderness in this area, you need to get x-rays and you probably need to get an MRI because the navicular bone has a poor blood supply and does not heal. If you fracture it, you have to almost always put a screw in it. Now, 96 to 99% of the time, these are sensitive for ruling out an ankle fracture. If all of those are negative. If the inability, if you can bear weight, if you can walk a couple steps, if you don't have tenderness on the inside of the ankle bone or the outside of the ankle bone, if you don't have any tenderness in that lateral fifth uh, metatarsal head, uh, really at the base, or at the navicular, you're almost always never going to have a fracture. Now, I'm going to go back to the most common type of lateral ankle sprain or low ankle sprain, they call it. This is the most common injury in all of orthopedics for good reason, because this ankle complex right here, it almost forms a little triangle, is very, very weak compared to the inside of the ankle. 90% of ankle injuries are lateral classic low ankle sprains, 90%. Now, grade ones are, are, are mild injuries. All of us have had a grade one at some point in time. This is where the ligament is a little bit stretched, but not torn at all. You may have a little bit of bruising and a little bit of swelling, but usually you can walk it off. It may hurt for a couple days and there may be a little bit of swelling, but they do okay. Some athletes are able to go right back on the field. Some athletes will have to take a couple days off. It really just depends on how much instability there is. Now, grade twos, those are, are a little bit more painful. These are, are usually partial tears or big stretches of the ligament. Usually these involve the ATFL, but also the CFL, not always, but usually. And these, you know, they'll have some bruising. You'll have a lot of swelling. Uh, and you may have to take a week or two off before you can get back on the field, get back on the court. You know, maybe take a little bit of crutches. Sometimes there is necessary for this. These don't usually require any significant treatment, but they do require time, a little bit of elevation, sometimes compression or ice, 
Um, and, and you really need to give it a couple days, 24, realistically up to 72 hours before you start uh, really walking on it to, to really allow that swelling to calm down and allow that ligament to, to, to kind of heal up a little bit. Grade threes are not very common, but they definitely happen. And these are full thickness tears of the, at least the ATFL, sometimes the CFL, and, and if it's really bad, the PTFL as well. Now, when that happens, sometimes these are so unstable. It's almost like if you're trying to walk with a pair of boots that are not tied. You, you just, you have no stability. Everything's flopping around. And, and when that happens, uh, sometimes you end up needing surgery or, or, or needing injections. These are not, grade threes are significant injuries. They are pretty rare. Some people can come back in three to four weeks, especially basketball players that have done this a lot. But some sometimes these are also have tendon injuries. These might have fractures. It, it, to do something a grade three, you have a lot of force involved. And usually there's something along that, that comes along for the ride. Now, uh, you know, you can confirm these on testing with, with, with just by, by, by pulling the ankle basically towards you, that's called an anterior drawer. You can also sort of do something called a tailor tilt. Both of those are, are pretty classic and pretty obvious to see, yes, that, that you injured the ankle. You're basically trying to manipulate the ankle to see how much it's moving and how, how unstable and weak it is compared to uh, maybe, say, the other side or how it should be. Now, medial ankle sprains or ankle sprains on the inside of the ankle are super rare. I'm talking 1%, maybe up to 5% of all ankle sprains. They're very, very rare. Why? Because the medial or inner ankle ligament called the deltoid ligament has two layers. There's a superficial layer and there's a deep layer. And there's really multiple ligaments that make them up. We just call it the deltoid. These are so strong, that's why we almost always roll our ankle laterally because the medial ankle is so strong that it almost always goes out to the side. If you happen to injure the deltoid ligament, you almost always will injure something else as well. An isolated deltoid ligament is super, super rare. And if you did it, that almost always takes a significant amount of time because it doesn't heal well. It's so thick and it's so important that a lot of the times people take a long time to come back from these. Um, and some people just never feel the same, that never, the ankle never feels stable again after a deltoid injury. Now, uh, sometimes they do need to be surgically repaired. Sometimes you can have a, a, a deltoid with a, a chronic lateral so medial and lateral, sometimes you have a fracture or, or a tendon injury along with it. The last type of high uh, of ankle sprain is, is something that we really don't see a whole lot in everyday life. We really don't see a whole lot in most sports. The By far, the most common sport we see, this is American football, without question. This is called a high ankle sprain, or also known as a syndesmotic ligament. Now, the syndesmotic ligament, if you think of what the lower extremity is trying to do, you have two bones. You have the tibia and you have the fibula. The fibula is the small bone on the outside. The tibia is the shin bone. Now, those two bones have a thick ligament that holds those two bones together. That ligament basically allows the ankle joint to function. That's called the syndesmotic ligament, and there's multiple kind of levels to it, and there's also thickness to it. There's a superficial layer, and there's a deep layer. Now, high ankle sprains are devastating injuries. Most people who suffer a high ankle sprain almost always do it kind of like this, and someone rams their foot or their heel, and, and the separation of that. You can do it a couple different ways. That's a very common way. Now, when this happens, most players cannot put weight on that foot. It is very, very difficult to move, to cut, to run on this. Even grade ones take a couple weeks to finally feel okay. You can tape it up. It's not going to last. You can put a, a, a brace on it. It's not going to be enough. The problem with these is that the syndesmotic ligament is supposed to hold the shin and the tibia, the tibia and the fibula, excuse me, together. 
If it's sprained, that means it's weaker and it's open, it's not as tight. But what happens is the ankle joint, we call the ankle mortis, cannot handle too much flexion or too much movement of those bones. And it really starts to be uncommon and comfortable. Now, a grade one is detrimental for a high ankle sprain. These are awful injuries, especially for what we call rotational injuries. So trying to put your foot in the ground and rotate to one side. That's the problem with these. Even a mild one is much, much worse than even a grade three or a really bad grade two lateral just because of how this zaps explosiveness so much. When I discuss NFL player injuries, and I talk about a high ankle sprain, it is the death uh, to explosiveness in the short term. These are awful injuries. I've seen players six months later still say, I don't feel like I am the same player as before my high ankle. It's an awful injury. And, and I don't care what position you play, these really, really affect people. We've seen some players try to play through them, and admirably, some of them are able to kind of hobble around. Trevor Lawrence did that last year for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But we've also seen players that really struggle, and even though they're out a week, uh, they had trouble uh, you know, cutting and, and, and really accelerating. Most players with high ankle sprains can run straight. They can't cut or rotate because that's when that ligament is really, really uh, stressed and the, and the ankle can't handle it. Now, grade twos I've seen take four, five, six, seven, sometimes up to eight weeks. These can be very frustrating injuries and, 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 and it just doesn't feel like it's ever going to get better. Some people are in crutches for weeks. Uh, whenever we see these for a running back, it zaps their explosiveness for about a month after they uh, after they suffer it sometimes longer. Several top running backs suffered this last year, Saquon Barkley, Austin Eckler. Uh, it's very, it's, unfortunately, they're very common given the nature of the position. Now, grade threes are actually not as rare as some of the other injuries. Grade threes basically means that this tendon, this syndesmotic ligament is completely torn. It is no longer together, and there's so much instability that they have to put do surgery. There's, 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 not, there's no way that they can get this to function. Now, when that happens, the, the, the surgeon, what they're going to do is they basically go in, they put a screw through here, and they basically cinch it together. It's called a tightrope procedure. There's a couple different varieties of it. But in general, this is something that works really, really well. And we've seen this uh, for several years now. Tua Tagovailoa had it had one ankle while he was at Alabama, came back in like two weeks or three weeks or something for a bowl game. And then the following season, he did the other ankle and had basically the same thing, had another tight rope and, uh, and, and returned a couple weeks after that. We also saw Jalen Hurts basically do the same thing when he was at Alabama. So these are unfortunately quite common, especially for someone who's mobile or even just getting sacked from behind uh, in, in football. Now, the beauty of these is after you have it repaired, the odds of you having a new one are very, very low. You can still have one. And usually if you do, they're pretty mild. Uh, because of the, the fact that you still have hardware in there. If you do a bad one, you really, really did a good job. Now, it is, it is quite rare to have a high and a medial or high and a lateral or something like that. You can. It, it just doesn't happen that often. Um, the, the final section I want to talk about here is about treatments. Most of the time, ankle injuries do really, really well. You're going to do ice. You're going to rest it. Sometimes you're going to elevate it because these are do swell. You can wrap these. You can do some. There's a good ankle brace. I used one by a company came called Dawn Joy, I believe is the, the, the one that I'm thinking of. Um, and, 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 and there's a couple others that work really well that you can basically kind of, uh, it's almost like a lace up where you, you almost like a, a shoe. And then it actually also has a rotational device that you can put on after that. They're about 20 or 30 bucks, but they do a really good job of kind of preventing from that instability. And, and ideally, you don't have to wear it except for when, when you're playing or when it feels unstable. You shouldn't have to use it every day. Now, for the people that uh, unfortunately have chronic instability, chronic pain, 
Uh, you can inject these. Cortisone doesn't really do a whole lot for these. And you really need something to tighten up those different ligaments and tendons that are really torn and beat up. Uh, you can put a little stem cells or PRP into the joint. Sometimes that joint does get a little cartilage de defects as well. Um, and, and I do inject these quite often and they do really well. Uh, this is very, very superficial within an eighth of an inch, a half an inch underneath the skin. They are right there. There's not a whole lot of tissue uh, there. And sometimes there, there's just not a lot to work with. You just you, you try to break away some of the scar tissue and help as much as you can. Synesmotic or high ankle sprains actually do really well with stem cells as well, assuming it's not a full thickness tear. Um, but in general, um, surgery is not common for these unless you have a fracture, unless you have a bad high ankle, unless you have a really bad uh, deltoid, like a partial tear. For NFL fans, that's what Michael Thomas had in his bad injury. He had a partial tear of his deltoid, which is why, in my opinion, he never looked the same again. Um, but in general, uh, uh, repair or reconstruction of an ankle uh, secondary to a sprain is quite rare. It's usually when there's a tendon injury uh, or a fracture or just a complete crazy injury where, uh, where the, the ankle doesn't really look the same again. And, and then that time you have to reconstruct it uh, and end up having to do a couple things. But hopefully you found that helpful. These are very common injuries. Uh, and I kind of wanted to break it down for you. I will do a, a quick uh, kind of review. For lateral ankle sprains, we're looking at grade ones and grade twos are both about one to two weeks. Some people uh, uh, can play on them. The grade threes are, are basically more like three to four weeks, sometimes to the point where they end up having surgery, but not super common. The medial ankle sprains are super rare, so you're probably not going to see one of those. And those high ankle sprains take anywhere from three to four weeks in the explosive uh, athletes like your running backs and your wide receivers um, or, or, or even sometimes your defensive ends. And then the grade twos can take, uh, you know, four to sometimes up to eight weeks. And then the grade threes, they pretty much immediately go uh, surgery and, and they end up uh, having a high ankle uh, uh, tightrope procedure, we call it. And they sometimes can come back in about eight to 12 weeks, but it takes a while for them to come back. It is usually not a quick uh, injury uh, surgery. They don't usually like to, to send them back too quickly. Hopefully you found that helpful. I would love to know your thoughts and, and, and share some different things that uh, I should be uh, talking about that you'd like to hear about. Uh, sometimes I will have to get a guest if I'm not super knowledgeable about it. I have a couple uh, in the works that I have some good ideas that I like to discuss. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. If you wouldn't mind, share this with your loved ones, your friends, and check out some of the old episodes. If you haven't seen them yet, this was episode number 26. And we will see you next week for 27. Thank you very much. Take care.